Can we talk about how hard it is to leave the good guy? One when you say, I want a divorce, and he's like... In today's video, we'll delve into some fascinating cases related to relationships and dating. First, we'll explore the story of a woman who regrets divorcing her husband. Then, we'll discuss the reasons why men often date partners perceived as below them while women tend to date partners perceived as above them. Additionally, we'll talk about a woman who suggests that women in their 20s should date without expectations and another woman who advocates against dating broke men. Stay tuned to hear these intriguing perspectives. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell to support the channel. Let's get started. Ladies, the smarter, richer, and more ambitious you are as a woman, the harder it's gonna be to find a man because men tend to date down and women tend to date up. And so you'll notice as you climb the totem pole of life, your dating pool is gonna get a lot smaller because the men who aren't on your level financially, ambition-wise, intellectually, status-wise, you are going to not be attracted to because you're gonna feel that they don't have a lot to offer you that you can't offer yourself. And then the ones who are on your level or above, well, a lot of them are not in a rush to commit because they don't have the pressure of the biological clock. Or they might be looking for women who are extremely submissive. In other words, they don't want a power couple dynamic, which is going to leave you with very few options who you are actually attracted to. But not all hope is lost. In fact, I've helped thousands of alpha women find love with high value men. But leaning into your divine femininity is the secret. And so are you suggesting that men only date women they aren't attracted to? Sounds pretty complicated, right? Smart ladies out there know the truth. Here's the thing. Regardless of a woman's level or status, there's often an expectation from men in relationships. Men want to feel appreciated and valued, and they appreciate it when women put in effort and don't just coast through. It's about allowing each other to grow and become the best versions of themselves. But sometimes, it feels like women are hesitant to admit that they might not truly love men, which can lead to a lack of empathy and emotional support. As a woman, Having a large dating pool might not necessarily be a good thing. It could mean you're not putting in the right effort, or you're not connecting on a deeper level with someone. At the end of the day, it's about being true to yourself and respecting others in the dating world. How are you falling in love and falling for at all, period? Falling for at all. Broke guys. Well, I guess some haven't taken into consideration that not every woman decides to enter into a relationship strictly based on what is in a guy's bank account. What is appealing about a man that is in debt and unable to provide for you? I'm really starting to wonder if some women actually believe that that's the only purpose that men serve. I, I need to know this. I need to know the science behind it. I need you to make it make sense for me. I think that that would actually be a waste of time trying to convince someone that something actually makes sense to another person when they've already made up their mind against it. Because I'm genuinely, genuinely so concerned. So concerned for you. How kind. And what exactly is there to be concerned about? I'm concerned for your mental health. I'm concerned for your overall well-being. I am just very concerned. And I need you to know that there's nothing okay about that. There's nothing okay about that, okay? I don't give a fuck what anybody else says to you. They're lying. Well, contrary to what some would actually have you believe, it is perfectly acceptable and highly encouraged in many cases to actually get into a relationship with someone based on how they make you feel and how they treat you, not based on what's in their bank account and what they can do for you. So yeah, they're not the ones who are lying here. Have you ever noticed how some women seem to rely too heavily on others for financial support? It's like a red flag waving in front of us. Let's talk about falling in love. It's supposed to be this deep, emotional experience, not just about taking advantage of someone's wallet. If all a woman cares about is material things, it's like she's being overtaken by the sin of greed. Liking someone for their body? That's lust. Liking them for what they can buy you? That's greed. But liking someone for who they are, their soul and personality? Now, that's real love. Here's the thing. Hard times don't care if you're a good person or not. It's just a fact of life. And sometimes, you hear about these women driving men into debt and then leaving them high and dry. Why should men be expected to be the sole providers in a world that screams equality? We live in a time where both women and men are working hard, yet some women still chase after money and equality in their own way. This leaves men feeling unappreciated and undervalued. Listen, some women seem to put others down just because they don't share the same beliefs. It's like they're superficial and focused only on themselves. But you know what? 
If someone's too focused on themselves and not willing to give back, they might find themselves alone for a long time. No offense, but surrounded by cats in old age doesn't sound like everyone's cup of tea. Maybe this woman had a wake-up call when she realized what it's like to be the primary breadwinner. But hey, many men are willing to support someone they love. It's all about reciprocity and mutual respect. It seems like this generation of women wants it all without giving much in return. It's time for a shift towards genuine connection and understanding in relationships. If you are single, and especially if you are single and in your 20s, please stop dating with any expectations. Leave expectations in the door, prioritize fun, and let things grow organically. And let them fade organically too. I have only recently really started doing this and it makes dating so much more fun. I am hanging out with a guy that I really, really like right now and me two years ago would have absolutely been spinning about how much I like him and how I'm gonna get him to date me and how, when it's gonna happen and how it's gonna happen and all these things. And I swear we're having more fun and being more playful and goofy and honestly probably more affectionate and everything because we're just letting it be what it is right now. And it almost makes it kind of exciting to like, we've even said like we don't have expectations. Like it would actually surprise us if we started dating. But like, and it almost makes it exciting because it's like, when is it going to end? We want to soak it all up. I totally get where you're coming from. Dating in your 20s can be such a whirlwind. And sometimes it's best to just go with the flow and enjoy the journey without putting too much pressure on expectations. When you let things grow organically, you're allowing genuine connections to develop naturally without the pressure of predefined expectations. It's like planting a seed and watching it bloom at its own pace, right? And you're absolutely right about letting things fade organically if they're not meant to be. Sometimes relationships have a season. And it's okay to embrace the flow of life and connections without forcing anything. It's true that sometimes there can be a misconception about what men should be able to provide in a relationship. Some women might have expectations that are unrealistic or put too much pressure on men to fulfill every role or desire. Pathetic. Listen, it's important to remember that men have their own strengths and limitations. Expecting a man to be everything for someone else can be overwhelming and unsustainable for the relationship. So here's to embracing the present moment, having fun, and letting life unfold as it should. Trusting the process can lead to some unexpected and beautiful connections along the way. Can we talk about how hard it is to leave the good guy? One when you say, I want a divorce, and he's like, no, I want to work this out. Everything's going to be fine. You know, we can get through this and he's so encouraging and everything's just so fucking peachy keen, right? We talk about how I'm manipulated into staying because he's a good guy. He does nothing wrong. Like, the only thing he's guilty of is being lazy and, you know, not putting in effort like we did when we were in the beginning of our relationship, like any other marriage. He doesn't beat me, he doesn't do anything, he doesn't take money from me, but he downplays my emotions. I don't think he fully understands me. And we've talked about this, y'all. This has all been in counseling, but how do you leave the good guy? I'm having like an internal battle right now because like I want to leave. I want to file divorce papers and I want to freaking run to Maine or something. I mean, am I the crazy one? Am I the crazy one? Because I keep throwing these fits and and fighting with him. I look legit crazy because I literally stay in bed all day. A lot of that is because if I don't stay in bed all day, I will nitpick him. And I didn't start doing this until like last year. Like I don't. Because I'm so unhappy with myself that it, I will nitpick him and tear him apart. So if I stay in bed, I won't be mean. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And I'm only sharing this because I swear to God, I promise transparency. And I swear to God, I promise the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I, I am struggling today. That this has been an ongoing struggle for the past like six months of my marriage. And I've I've said it here and there in videos but I've never gotten this raw. I'm tired of marriage counseling. I'm tired of trying. I'm ready to leave. I'm ready for a divorce. I'm exhausted. I'm mentally at my capacity. I feel like I'm stretched thin. I feel like I just, I can't describe it, but I am not okay today. You know, it's often said that women want a man who doesn't exist. Someone who's flawless and perfect in every way. But let's be real here. No one is perfect, right? That's why it's so important to take your time when dating someone. You need to see each other at your worst, experience boredom together, and even witness moments of anger or frustration. If you can still love and support each other through the tough times, then that's when you know it's real. 
Of course marriage is not all rainbows and butterflies. It takes effort from both sides. But sometimes, I see expectations that are just way out of whack as in the case of this woman. It's like expecting your partner to be a superhero 24-7. And here's a thought that might ruffle some feathers. Have you ever noticed that some women seem to only appreciate you when you're toxic or playing hard to get? It's like they're drawn to drama instead of genuine connection. But hey, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Now, about the grass being greener on the other side, trust me, it's not always the case. Sometimes people realize that what they had was pretty darn good after all. But hey, everyone's on their own journey, right? And let's talk about cheating. It's a touchy subject, but some women might cheat because they're constantly searching for the better option without wanting to stand on their own two feet emotionally and financially. It's a tough cycle to break. At the end of the day, relationships and dating can be messy and complicated. Take your time, know your worth, and remember that finding the right person is about more than just ticking boxes on a checklist.